Electric cars are destroying the American dream. The US auto industry was fundamental to building the greatest economy of the 20th century, the most prosperous nation the world had ever seen. There was no greater embodiment of American freedom than a roaring V8 engine on an endless highway. Until Elon Musk came along and ruined everything with his electrified, automated monstrosity of a product built by thousands of robots that will utterly decimate good American jobs. This is how the communists win. But could Tesla really become the destroyer of worlds? I mean, this is the most successful American automotive company to emerge in the past 100 years. It's possible that they might be onto something here. And if so, then could it also be possible that Musk and the EV revolution that he kickstarted might actually prove to be the savior of the American worker. So before we can really understand whether EVs are going to save or destroy America, we need to figure out how it got broken in the first place. And you might have your own version of events for the collapse of American industry. That's fine. I personally never put too much thought into it because I'm Canadian and we've got our own problems up here. But I've spent a few days going over the numbers and the history and I think I've got a pretty good idea of what went down. The real story here is that US manufacturing was dealt its fatal blow long before Elon Musk. The peak of the American auto industry came all the way back in 1979, when nearly 20 million people were employed by the manufacturing industry. Today, that number has dwindled to around 13 million. Over that same period of time, the US population has grown by around 50%, so we're looking at a pretty significant decline in jobs per capita. So whose fault was that? Can we blame the government? It must have been the Democrats, right? Wrong. Ronald Reagan took office in January 1981, and by the end of that year, the domestic manufacturing sector would experience a significant downturn from which it would never fully recover. Reaganomics was a governing strategy generally defined by low taxes, low spending, and free market capitalism. Basically, the government stays out of the way and lets the consumers and corporations dictate the economy. It's a fine idea in theory, and the 80s was a very prosperous time for a lot of Americans, particularly the Silicon Valley tech sector, but that's a whole other video. On the larger scale, the free market didn't come out to support Made in America, which is going to remain our focus for today. But you can't fully blame Reagan here, not even close, really, because his number one priority was to fix the catastrophic inflation rate that he had inherited from Jimmy Carter. Now, as much as I love throwing people under the bus, we still can't really blame the Democrats either because the great inflation of the 1970s was a two-pronged spear, with prong number one arising in the Richard Nixon slash Gerald Ford calamity in the first half of the decade. It cooled down for a couple of years, but came roaring back in 79 and 80. Reaganomics succeeded at crushing the inflation rate, resetting all of the damage that had been done over the previous decade, yet this did nothing to boost the domestic manufacturing industry, and the best I can tell it's because in their quest for lower prices, the free market developed a taste for offshoring. So the price of American goods never actually went down with the rate of inflation, but the utilization of cheap foreign labor and foreign-made products marked a drastic shift in the consumer landscape. I know we've spoken about the Foreo Bear before, which combines microcurrent technology with T-Sonic pulsations to tighten and firm your skin, giving you a more youthful, contoured complexion. But today, I've got some powerful visuals to truly showcase its effectiveness. Look at these before and after images. The transformation is undeniable, right? So what's the secret behind this magic? Let's dive into the benefits. Enhanced skin firmness and elasticity, say goodbye to saggy skin and hello to youthful vibrancy, reduction in appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, this device naturally rejuvenates the skin, making those lines less noticeable. Improved blood circulation, get ready for that radiant and healthy glow we love. Targeted facial muscle stimulation, it's a unique skincare approach that makes a difference. User-friendly and customizable settings, whether she's a skincare pro or just beginning her journey, the Foreo Bear is designed for intuitive use. My fiance used to treat herself to a facial at a salon once in a blue moon because they cost hundreds for a single facial treatment. 
But with Bayer, you bring the professional treatment home, saving both time and money. A gift like this speaks volumes. It says you care about her well-being, confidence, and happiness. Plus, every time she uses it and sees the results, she'll be reminded of your thoughtful choice. And the best part is, right now, you can get 21% off Bear by clicking the link in the description. If you want to stand out with your gift-giving game this year, make the For Your Bear your go-to choice. I'm looking forward to your feedback. Cheers. So, now we get to our real culprit here. It's all Japan's fault. The Japanese post-war recovery came slowly, but when they finally hit their stride, Japan's economy took off like a rocket and their consumer electronics quickly flooded the US market. Every home in America was now equipped with futuristic technology from Panasonic to Shiba and Sony. The exact same story played out in the automotive industry. As much as we love to put the American muscle car on a pedestal, the majority of American-made cars kinda sucked. They were unsafe at any speed, and the overall quality was dodgy at best. Now again, your version of events may vary, but let's refer to a little film. This is an experiment that the IIHS conducted a few years back. They wanted to show the progression of automotive safety by taking a 1958 Chevy Bel Air and smashing it head-on into a 2009 Chevy Malibu. Now, your first instinct might be that the giant boat of Detroit Steel is going to obliterate the flimsy modern plastic mobile. They don't make them like they used to, right? Roll the clip. And yeah, the driver of the 21st century Malibu probably would have walked away from that one while the occupants of the classic car were reduced to a bloody pulp. They don't make them like they used to, and thank God for that. So, when Toyota arrived on the scene with their Japanese contemporaries like Nissan and Honda, they offered the American consumer a higher quality product at a competitive retail price. And as an added bonus, you get a highly efficient and compact Japanese engine that won't bankrupt your family on gasoline cost, an improved standard for passenger safety, and the cars would even go around corners without tipping over and exploding. By the time the 90s came around, foreign cars were here to stay, and the reality is that the American brands have been desperately and unsuccessfully trying to play catch-up the entire time. We all know someone who's still happily driving a 30-year-old Toyota, but when was the last time you saw a 90s-era Ford or Chevrolet on the road? And then, of course, there was the catastrophic implosion and bankruptcy of 2008, which reduced the American auto industry to a group of beggars at the feet of President George W. Bush, who obediently wrote them a $17 billion check to avert total collapse of the industry. Hence, the phrase, too big to fail, was officially coined. This bailout was an unfathomable amount of money for the time, but even so, the best it accomplished was to stop the bleeding. Going back to our chart here, we can see that the amount of growth in US manufacturing following that bottom in 2009 has been pretty much negligible. There have been dips and recoveries in the past, but never before has there been such a sharp decline followed by such a slow return. And you can put that on Barack Obama, sure. The man was no Dennis Rodman, he could not stick a rebound, but just look at the devastation in the first decade of the 21st century. That's 6 million jobs evaporating from the economy. Good, middle-class jobs that actually supported a family and allowed people to get ahead. They are gone. And this is where Elon Musk and his electric cars join the party. Mid-dumpster fire, and they're about to change the industry forever. So, is Elon Musk some kind of a techno-Jesus? No. Did he figure out how to capitalize on the right technology at the right time? Absolutely. Tesla entered the US auto industry into a total void of innovation or creative thought. The best idea that the American builders had come up with in decades was to just take all of the old muscle cars from the 60s that people actually liked and do modern reissues of those same designs. I mean, why waste energy reimagining the Mustang for the 21st century? That would be hard, so Ford decided they're just going to copy and paste the 1967 fastback style forever. So, when the Tesla Model S dropped in 2013, this was the first time since the 1970s that an American automaker was doing something that no other car company in the world could match. Sure, we did have electric cars and hybrid cars back then, but the Nissan Leaf and the Toyota Prius were never really taken seriously. They were literally a joke. South Park made a whole episode roasting Prius drivers in 2006. 
But Tesla was exciting. A big, powerful, American-made car just like back in the day, but these things were loaded with the most state-of-the-art technology. It was like driving a spaceship. It looked like nothing else on the road, and on top of all that, Tesla was making the safest car on the road. The important thing to note here is that Tesla arrived at a time when US automaking had been in steep decline for decades. Factory closures had been happening all across the country, Detroit was reduced to an apocalyptic wasteland, and here comes Elon Musk, buying up one of those closed factories and restarting operations, putting people back to work, and making the most advanced automobile in the world right down there in the good old USA. Here's the problem though. Sure, the car is made in America, but those batteries, the most expensive part of the whole thing, they're made in Asia. You're still offshoring the majority of the cost. Now we enter the Gigafactory, and this is where things really start to change. Once Tesla had locked down the vehicle manufacturing side of things, attention turned to the battery problem. The company liked Panasonic battery cells, but they didn't like importing them across the Pacific Ocean. So where competitors in their industry had made outsourcing and offshoring a part of their business strategy, Tesla was striving to do the opposite. They wanted as much vertical integration as possible. That means fewer suppliers and more in-house onshore manufacturing. This is where Gigafactory Nevada was born. Tesla wanted to bring their battery manufacturing stateside. Panasonic wasn't making the batteries that Tesla needed in America, so Tesla built a whole new factory outside Reno for Panasonic to use. So, within a period of about five years, Tesla has restarted a dead automotive factory and constructed a brand new, state-of-the-art battery manufacturing plant. Meanwhile, their American competition basically just continued to stagnate while pretending that electric cars were only a rich, liberal fad and Tesla was destined for bankruptcy before the end of the decade. Anyway, I'm sure you get the point that we're trying to get across here. You are smart people. Growth is directly related to innovation. Without new companies entering an industry and trying new ideas, that industry will only go into decline. I mean, just look at Giga Texas. It is the second largest manufacturing plant in the United States, and the Giga factory is only surpassed by the Boeing manufacturing plant in Washington, where they build commercial airplanes. So instead of thinking about Tesla as the destroyer of the traditional auto industry, it's much more healthy to look at them as a much needed catalyst for change and rejuvenation. Because Tesla may have been the first American company to specialize in electric vehicles and build their own battery plants, but they are definitely not the last. The rise of Tesla has opened up the door for a whole new generation of American car makers. Rivian and Lucid are the second wave of American EV startups who are building new manufacturing infrastructure in the US, and there will be a third wave and a fourth that are still to come. At the same time, the EV revolution has stimulated growth in the old, established Detroit automakers. Now everyone wants their own battery factory. General Motors has partnered up with LG Energy to build a series of Altium battery cell production lines. Ford has linked up with CATL to build their Blue Oval Battery Park in Michigan. Stellantis, also known as Chrysler, is building a gigantic battery plant up here in Ontario, Canada. It's the biggest new construction project that we've had in this province for a very long time, and it's giving workers in the automotive sector hope that there is a future for their industry. Each of these new battery making facilities tends to add around 2,000 or more new jobs into the economy in addition to supporting the local contractors and raw material producers. Anytime you bring new construction and new opportunity to a city, it has a ripple effect that benefits everyone from restaurants to clothing stores. Electric vehicles were inevitable. We all know that we have to stop burning gasoline, but it is important to recognize that without Elon Musk and Tesla coming into the industry and totally disrupting the status quo, then we would not be anywhere near as close to an EV transition as we are today. And none of this brand new manufacturing infrastructure that we just looked at would even exist right now. And in that alternate timeline future where Tesla never happened, it's more than likely we would have seen the Chinese EV makers just move in and obliterate anything that was left of American auto manufacturing. 
in order to stimulate new growth, you have to first cut away the old dead limbs. We're talking about trees here, that doesn't work for people, but the analogy holds true for industry. You can't grow without change, and American manufacturing needed Tesla and electric vehicles to help them make that change towards the future. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.